Hi everyone, I'm Sean O'Kane for Chip Estimate TV, where we bring you the most up-to-date information in IP and semiconductor design in the EDA industry. Joining me today is our world traveler, Mr. John Blyler, right here. He's the president and CEO of IP Systems and IoT Systems, and John joins us on a regular basis to share his travelogue of experiences. Right now, I can see that you're uh, you, you're in your stomping grounds, Mount Hood up there in Oregon, and uh, are you a, a skier, a snowboarder, or just a lodge <laughs> dweller? Yes, well, at different parts of the day, I'm, I'm all three. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, let, let, let me just jump right in there. I just got back from Arm TechCon, hmm. um, uh, where IoT and sensors was again a hot topic of, uh, of conversation around the area of transportation. So tell me something cool that you've seen in the past few months. Well, the transportation, of course, the first thing that comes to mind is automotive. Um, a couple of months back, I was at the Renaissance uh, DevCon down in LA, mm -hmm. and there they had the connected car, which they'd been working on for quite a while, and they had several versions of it. In one of the older versions, it was actually controlled with a joystick and whatnot, so I got to uh, control the steering and driving for a, a it was a stationary car, but nevertheless, <laughs> it, was, it was fun. Um, and then they actually had their, their uh, connected car. It's more of an autonomous car, mm -hmm. so uh, fully equipped with uh, you know, all sorts of radar and sensors. And as a matter of fact, the car is, is, is rather self-aware of itself. It can see where it is as it's parking, and, and of course you can see it as well. Um, I was at some other events, right. or covered some other events. One was NXP, and they also have a, a connected car through, um, I think, the University of Eindhoven and some of the students there. But mm -hmm. one of the things that I wrote about was this, um, you know, for these connected cars to be safe, it's mm -hmm. been in the news a lot, they're going to need a lot of uh, security updates, a lot of patches. Well, who do we know that is great at doing uh, patches and oh, updates? Well, hey, hey, go ahead, say it. Well, uh, Microsoft, right? Oh. Uh, and actually, lots of updates. Lots of updates, and yeah. Microsoft may well become a player in all of this because they are very good at, <laughs> at doing updates, will be needed, <laughs> which will be needed often. Yes, yes, yes. So that sounds pretty cool. Um, now, tell me what's new in the world of IP and hardware software systems. Can I uh, can I use the word IoT or you you may use the word and the acronym IoT okay or as Cisco says Internet of Everything yes that's that's true and they, they like do two that. snaps up <laughs> <laughs> but anyway but, tell me great great um, so there's uh, there's a lot going on in IoT and where to start um, you know in the SOCs we're familiar with the term platform and we've been doing platform development especially with IP for a long time. Well, that platform now has become not only the chip, but also the board and, and software and everything else as we know. And so everyone, especially microprocessor-based companies, have platforms. Uh, at the Renaissance event, I mentioned they just introduced a new one they're calling um, Synergy, uh, hardware and software. What's interesting there is that they actually uh, have qualified software for those, which is qualified to you know some of like the software standards like uh, uh, I think it's uh, 12, 207 and things like that. That kind of an interesting, interesting twist. Um, you know, Mentor and Synopsis mm -hmm. and Cadence. Cadence has the, the close IP connection with ARM announced, I think, last year, and, and it's evolving even more now into an offering of IoT. Mm -hmm. um, and I've probably left others off the list here. Imagination, I know, is in there right. as well with MIPS and whatnot. Um, and ARM, uh, Perfect recently, figure announced their design start, which which is something a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So uh, ARM Design Start uh, is their new IP online access portal. So uh, talk a little bit more through that about, about this offering. Well, so the, the initial offering, and I, I probably have the uh, number wrong, but they have like a quick start with their Cortex Zero. It's like 40K or something for, for the licensing part of that, which is very um, reasonable. But the other thing that's happening, and it's, it's a very timely thing, because the other thing that's kind of happening now, especially mm. with the IoT, is the older nodes, like 180 nanometer and whatnot, those further back on Moore's Law, mm -hmm. are now perfect places for things like IoT. Right. So it is arguably a time when, you, when a startup or a small company could use, um, could make an SOC of their own uh, back at one of those nodes, at which, at which uh, IoT is very happy. 
And that's one of the reasons why um, MIT has referred to this now as the, as hardware is the new software, because you can begin to make these chips at, um, at costs that can be reached, and there's other benefits for doing it besides cost. Right, and so using those commodity nodes at you know 180 uh, nanometer and, 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 and so on, so cost effective, they get reused, you know, and, uh, and the reason why they're cost effective, tell me if I'm right or wrong, is, is the, the process of getting to smaller, smaller, smaller nodes is really expensive, is <laughs> it's, it not? It's, it's really expensive, yes. Yeah. You know, 28 I, nanometers, I think, is the last node they think that'll be uh, not expensive. But, but even mm -hmm. at, back at these higher nodes, those are still becoming even more cost effective, right? At right. 180 nanometer, yep. the wafer costs continue to go down at about 5%. So not necessarily Moore's Law, but it's, it's still got a lot of life to it. It'll have a lot more life. What else is new? Anything else? Uh, well, if you'll permit me a little... Uh, a little uh, chest thumping. Yes, yes, All a right, chest thumping here. I have just completed uh, the fifth edition of a Wiley uh, book on systems engineering management with uh, Dr. Blanchard. And this is a text that has been around for a long time with one of the uh, kind of seminal uh, works by Blanchard and, and Fabrica years ago. So I'm very pleased about that. And um, that fits into the systems mm -hmm. that we're seeing in the whole supply chain of the semiconductor world. So I. Mm -hmm. This is good. I like it. <laughs> Thank you, John. Hey, I really appreciate you stopping by. And, uh, you know, John uh, uh, meets us here uh, once a month or so, uh, depending on his schedule <laughs> and his travel schedule. But we yes. really appreciate him stopping in, just kind of giving an update on what's new and exciting out there. So, for Mr. John Blyler, my name is Sean O'Kane, and we'll see you next time on Chip Estimate TV.